In lesson two, nine, part two, we are going to continue talking about number sentences. You will need your whiteboard, whiteboard marker and eraser to use for our warm up. So let's go ahead and number one, two and three on our whiteboard. For number one, I want you to draw intersecting lines. Number two, draw parallel lines. Remember, here is a little hint. If you look at the word parallel. And number three, draw angle BDR. And please label the points B, D, and R. Go ahead and pause the video and draw these three things on your whiteboard. Number one, intersecting. Intersecting is another word for crossing. So these lines cross each other. They don't have to cross each other in a 90 degree angle or any specific way, but they need to cross each other. Number two, draw parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that are equal distance apart and they would never cross. Think of railroad tracks. Those are parallel. They would never cross each other or intersect. Lastly, draw angle BDR. Well, I know that the middle letter has to be where the two rays meet, where it makes a V. And I put the letter D there. Then it doesn't matter if you put the B here or the R or switch them around. Go ahead and erase your whiteboard and number one, two, and three. Here you're going to see a bar graph. Up at the top, we have the number of hours students slept last night. And this is maybe information from one particular fourth grade class. On the side, we have the number of students and then on the bottom, the hours slept. What I'm gonna ask is three questions about this bar graph. Number one, how many students slept exactly eight hours? Number two, how many students slept at least eight hours? And how many students are there in this entire class of data? So go ahead and number one, two, and three, answer these questions and go ahead and pause the video while you do. If we look at how many students slept exactly eight hours, I'm going to look at the third bar over, this one right here. And I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of use my vision to look over here. This is six here, this is eight. So halfway in between must be seven. So seven students slept exactly eight hours. Question two, how many slept at least eight hours? Well, the kids that slept, the kids that slept eight hours they slept at least eight. The students who slept nine hours, that's at least eight. It's in fact more. And the students who slept 10 hours, all of those students would be included. So for eight hours, we have seven students. For nine hours, we have between eight and 10 is nine. And 10 hours is four. So I'm gonna add those together. Seven and nine is 16 plus four is 20. So there are 20 students who slept at least eight hours. Now, my last question is, how many students are there in all? Well, we know in these three blocks that we, the, these bars that we just added up, we know that that ended up being 20 students. Now all I have to do is go ahead and add these students to it, along with these students, and I would get a grand total. So seven hours is five students, and this one is one. So if I add those all together, I get 26 students in all. Go ahead and wipe off your whiteboard. This will be our last warm up. Number one, we're going to round 14,783 to the nearest hundreds. Number two, round 802,913 to the nearest thousands. And number three, 
9,104,708 to the nearest million. Go ahead and round those three numbers. Remember to pause the video before you continue. All right, when you round the first one to the nearest hundreds, I look at the number in the hundreds place. Look one to the right, five or more. Raise the score, four or less. Let it rest. Surrounded to the nearest hundred is 14,800. Rounding to the nearest thousand, circle the number in the thousands, look one to the right. Five or more, raise the score, four or less, let it rest. It's five or more, so it's going to round up to three and everything after it turns to a zero. So rounded to the nearest thousand is 803,000. Rounded to the nearest million, I circle the number in the millions, I go to the neighbor and I say five or more, raise the score, four or less, let it rest. I'm going to let it rest. The number after the millions turns to a zero. So it's closer to nine million than it is 10 million. All right, today we're going to work on more number sentences. This is one of those Minnesota essential lessons that has been added on. That means you're going to have to write the number sentences on your whiteboard and solve each one as I do it in the video. So on your whiteboard, would you please write the equation S equals 200 minus three. Go ahead and write that. Then, next to it, you're going to go ahead and solve for s, the unknown or what we call a variable. So go ahead on your whiteboard and take 200 minus 3. Some of you may just see right away that the answer is 197. If not, you could go ahead and solve. So our solution is going to be 197. And if we were to rewrite that, Using our answer or our solution for S, we would write 197 equals 200 minus 3. I'm going to go ahead and skip number 2 for now, and I'm going to go on to number 3. Number 3 says 12 equals Y divided by, so this symbol is the same as a division sign. So 12 equals y divided by 7. Would you please write that on your whiteboard? When you see the symbol that looks like this, it's the same thing as divided by. So we're going to use the number 7 and 12 to figure out what number was divided by 7 to get 12. So I'm going to go over across the 7s till I get to the 12s. So if I go straight down from here and straight across, I see that I get 12 times seven is 84. So I'm going to do the opposite operation since they're dividing by, in order for me to get the solution, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm gonna take 12 times seven, which is 84. So the answer or solution is 84. 12 equals 84 divided by 7. Would you please write that on your whiteboard? Number 4. Some number plus 198 gives me 447. Would you please write number 4 on your whiteboard? 198 plus a number gives me 447. I am going to, to work backwards to figure out what they added to it to get the solution. So what is the opposite operation or the inverse operation of addition? Subtraction, so on your whiteboard, let's go ahead and let's figure out what 447 minus 198 is. Would you please solve that? All 
All right, so if I go ahead and subtract, I cannot take seven minus eight, so I'm gonna borrow from the four, make that a three, put that 10 in front of the seven to make 17 minus eight is nine. Borrow from the three, put that 10 in front of the 13, 13 minus nine is four, and three minus one is two. So the solution is 249. So now I'm going to insert that into my number sentence. 198 plus 249 equals 447. I'm gonna go ahead and erase. Number five, it says find one possible add-in or factor that makes the inequality true. So we don't have equal sign this time. Instead, we have less than, greater than, less than, and greater than. So I would like you to write the equation. Three times eight is less than three times, and you can go ahead and put that square in there. So three times, an asterisk also means to multiply, is less than three times what number? Well, think about this for a minute. The first thing I have to do is solve what is eight times three? 24. So what can I put in this box? So the answer is less than this side. So this side has to be more than 24 to make this correct. What if I put 10 in there? Is 24 less than what three times 10 is, which is 30? 10 works. Could I put 100 in there? Three times 100 would be 300. Is 24 less than 300? Remember the opening. Think of it as an alligator wants to eat the bigger number. So any number, nine or more, makes this true. Number six. On your whiteboard, would you please write 30 plus 50 is greater than A plus 40. So the first thing that we want to do is go ahead and solve the left side of the equation. 30 plus 50 is 80. So we want the left side to be greater than the right side. So if you look at A, what could I add to A so that it's going to be less than 80 because the left side has to be right, larger than the right-hand side. So if I put 40 here, 40 plus 40 be 80, and that's not greater than 80, it's equal to. So my number over here has to be one less than 30, not the one less than 40, which would be 39. Let me show you why. 39 plus 40 is 79. And is 80 greater than 79? Absolutely. I could put 38 there. If I put 38 there, 38 plus 40 would be 78. And is 80 greater than 78? Absolutely. So I could put anything that's 39 or less here. Let's do one more together, and then I will let you get going on your rest of your math. So on your whiteboard, would you please write some number times 12 is less than nine times nine. Well, the first thing we have to do is go ahead and solve the right-hand side of the equation. Using your multiplication chart or your memorization of your facts, nine times nine is what? 81. So whatever we solve for over on this side has to be less than 81. So go across your 12s for a minute. I reinserted the multiplication chart. Let's look across our 12s. We just have to make sure that it's less than 81 because the opening of the alligator's mouth 
is pointing at the 81. So we want our number to be less than that. So here's 84. So anything before that would be less than. So this would be 12 times 1, 12 times 2, 12 times 3, 12 times 4, 12 times 5, 12 times 6. So I could take any one of those. I could do a 2 or a 3 or a 4. So anything, 12 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 or less would make that equation true. So go ahead and refer to your Schoology folder for today and see what else you need to complete for today's math lesson.